Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and today I have a question for you. You see the switch on the top, 6.1 cubic inches, and the switch on the bottom, 1.13 cubic inches. They're both switches, right? I mean, the top one's controlled by Alexa, and it's a very advanced kind of switch, but they're both switches. And my question is, are they both considered the same for box fill for the 2020 NEC code? Or are we to use a higher box fill number for the bigger switch and a lesser box fill number for the smaller switch? And how about this example? The receptacle on the top is about 2.46 cubic inches. It's just one of those cheap 70 cent receptacles that I keep telling people to not buy. And the GFCI receptacle on the bottom, that's actually a slimline Leviton 20 amp GFCI receptacle. And it comes in at about 4.39 cubic inches. So what do you think? You think we should just count these exactly the same as far as our box fill calculations for the 2020 NEC code? Or is there some kind of differentiation we're supposed to make when one receptacle is so much larger than the other? Let's go to the NEC code and find out. Here we are at article 314.16b4, device or equipment fill. For each yoke or strap containing one or more devices or equipment, a double volume allowance in accordance with table 314.16b shall be made for each yoke or strap based on the largest conductor connected to a device or devices or equipment supported by that yoke or strap. And here is table 314.16b and it is called volume allowance required per conductor. So here we got the size of the conductor. Remember I was saying you take the largest conductor size in your box. And let's just say for easy math, let's say our largest conductor is 14 AWG in the box. So we go over here and it's two. So a 14 gauge conductor has a volume allowance of two. So here we are back at four device or equipment fill and it says for each yoke or strap containing one or more devices or equipment a double volume allowance in accordance with the table we just saw that's 314.16b shall be made for each yoke or strap based on the largest conductor connected to a device or devices and so forth so we need to take a double volume allowance for each receptacle or each switch. Now it doesn't say anything in here about how big the switch is. It doesn't say anything about how big the receptacle is. It's just a double volume allowance per this table that we just saw for each device. So for a little tiny cheap 70 cent switch or you know a $50 Alexa controlled switch you know that's six times bigger or so it's the same double volume allowance for example both of these switches would be counted if the largest wire in the box was 14 gauge both of these switches would be counted as four cubic inches for your box fill calculations. And both of these receptacles, if the largest wire in the box were 14 gauge, each of these receptacles would be counted as four cubic inches each, despite there being quite a difference in size in the receptacle. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this NEC article. Do you think it should be changed? Do you think that's about the best they can do? What do you think? I'll put links in my video description for the spiral bound NEC code book and 
the NEC handbook. And I will put in my video description as well a link to my playlist for EMT bending. I have 24 videos on EMT bending and I'll put a link for my playlist for NEC code videos, which there's a lot of those. I don't know how many, but there's a lot of them. So thank you very much. And I hope this video was helpful.